Well, this is the second part, and uh, this is where I talk about uh, using the software. So, the uh, file name is Negrini Cycle. In this case, uh, it's the 2013 version. Um, I might update that sometime. Generally, I have a, a, a tab called Data. You can't see the tab name at the bottom here, but this is the one called Data. Uh, I suppose we could scooch in to find it. There it is. And I'm actually going to go fetch one of the data sets uh, that I like to analyze. And this is, we'll go to the county populations. And the link to this data set will be given uh, in, the, in the comment section uh, for the video. So I'm going to take the county number, state name, county name, and the population numbers. Uh, this is 2012, so then, uh, I'm not sure how many we're going to get. It's going to be around 3,100 and... 40 something. We'll do copy, go back to the master, and in this case I need to go here and we'll do paste. So the headings have changed. I have some uh, information over here. I have the numbers here, but I need to calculate the first digit, second, first two, last two, and last two over here, and I need to copy these formulas down to the last row of the data. So I have the numbers over here, I'm going to select all, and now I want to copy to the bottom. And the way we do that is we're going to go up here, and I see the plus sign, and I give it a swift left uh, double click, and it is copied all the way down. I'm going to check that by going home and home, and I do see that indeed the formulas are at the last row. The last row is 3143, meaning that there must have been 3,142 counties. I'm going to go Control Home. And now, this formula says, if the number is greater than 0 0.01, then calculate the first digit. In other words, if the number is 0 or a negative number, it's going to put uh, a blank over here. Um, in fact, it's going to put the word blank there. And so if you want to change this, if you want the lower level to be, uh, if you wanted to include the negative numbers, or if you wanted to delete everything less than 10, you are going to go and have to manipulate this over here, this over here, and uh, you're going to have to change it to 10, or in fact you can, um, you can tell it to calculate the value and go to the absolute value of D2, in which case you will get the... Um, negative numbers as well. So you can adjust over here. The first thing that I like to look at is the data profile. And what this tells me is my large positive, large, small positive, zero, small negative, large negative. It's giving me a count for each, percentage of the total. Total, this is people, but it could be dollars. This here is usually when I'm doing accounts payable data and I want to know how many small, that is less than or $50 invoices there are. And this one here is when I want to look at the, the large numbers. But you could change this from 100,000 to um, a million if you like. You have to just go in and adjust at least both formulas so that you're doing the count and the sum and that it matches. Over here, if you're in, in a currency like the South African Rand, where 50 isn't very much, you might want to go to uh, 200 or 300, and you can just, you can change the values in the formulas. So, this is telling me there are no counties with less than 10 people, no counties with zero people, and no counties with negative numbers of people looking good. Uh, total number of uh, people in the United States, 308 million and a fraction. The next thing I want to do is my high-level overview, and this is my Benford's Law test. I clicked on the bottom here where it said first digits, and again, the line is Benford's Law, 30.1, 17.6, 12.5, all the way down. The bars are the actual proportions, and so let's look for one that's really good, the four. The height of the bar, the actual, and the expected are in pretty much the same place. That's a pretty good fit, at least visually. Second digits. Second digits go from 0 to 9, and we go from 12% down to 8.5%, and you can see it's a little bit choppy over here. Again, the bars are the actual, and the line is Benford. 
I like the first two digit graph and the first two digits go from one zero to double nine. And quite amazingly, they go from 4.1% all the way down to just under a half percent. The one zero amazingly is more than eight times likely than the double nine. And this is a reasonably good fit. We'll talk about the fit uh, in a while. The summation test is one that I haven't spoken about all that much, and I need to just change the axis here because this uh, I, can't, I can't tell all that much. I'm going to do format axis, and we'll go to the maximum of 0.1. And I need to do, we'll do a reset there. And now, what this is telling me is I have either one number that begins with 98 and it's really big, or I have a series of numbers that begin with 98 and they're all pretty big. There's either one number or a series of numbers beginning with 50 that are big, and when I go over here there's one number or a series of numbers beginning with 15. So that's what the summation test is all about. Last two digits. When I go to the right here, this is sort of in the cents position, and they sh none of the numbers should have cents because this is a these are all integers, and so it says double O. Everything ends with point double O, even though you can't see the point double O there. It's imputed it. These are the two numbers to the left of the decimal point, and we expect them to be evenly distributed around one percent each because these uh, last two digits go from 00 to 99. Eh, it's not such a great fit, and we'll have a look at more of all that in a moment. Now, the next point of interest are these tables. And um, I'm going to X out here. It took a long time to write, and uh, what we told over here, the number of records for each of the tests Total count for the for total sum for the summation test, and that should agree with my data profile. And let's go and have a look over here and see what's happening. So, this is for the first digits. My first digits go through one through nine, and this basically forms the basis for my first digit graph. So, this information is put on the graph. The count. 953, so we need to zoom this a bit. There we are, that's better. 953 numbers started with the digit 1. That was my count. 156 started with the digit 9. And you can see that the formula I'm using in here is count if. The proportion, this is 953 divided by the number of records giving that as the proportion, 594 divided by 3142, and so on. This is the expected proportion expected by Benford's law, 30.1, 17.6, 12.5. We saw that in the table. And this is the difference. The difference is usually, uh, when we calculate it, it will be actual minus expected. And I've done this as well, actual minus expect, expected. And this is where I'm starting to calculate the mean absolute deviation. This is the absolute value of the difference. And if I go back here, I have a very small difference. And I'm going to take the absolute value of that difference. I have a bigger difference here. Take the absolute value. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. Absolute value. And when I go back here, I have these nine absolute values. The bigger they are, the more I deviate from Benford's law. This is where I calculate the mean absolute deviation. And in this case, I go 0045. I'm going to go back to the table over here and just remind you that I looked at 25 data sets that were all good, not fraudulent. I even have some uh, county populations in here from the census. And then based on these results, we did the table over here. And so, um, here are the first digits, this is the range, and this is my conclusion. So remember I was at 0045. 0045 falls into the first range over here, but with 0045 is less than 006. Close conformity. 
So based on the types of data that we see in the real world, this one passes. Same with the second digits. I calculate a mean absolute deviation. And if I go over here, 00372, 00372, close conformity. We'll go back. Move across. These are the first two, two digits. I call it the first order test. It's my favorite test, and it's the one that I really like to do, and even not do the first or the second digits. I'm calculating the mean absolute deviation over here, 00143. We should have the same conclusion. 00143, no. Uh, it's higher than this. It is in the acceptable conformity arena. And let's go have a look at it again. First two digits, eh, it's a little choppy. It's not that good. Acceptable conformity is the most that I'm going to give it. If we go all the way to the top and back to this, we have the Z statistic. And what this calculates is whether the difference, that difference, that difference, that difference, it calculates whether that difference is statistically significant. And when the number is greater than 1.96, it is significant at the 1% level. And uh, I think it's 2.57 would make it significant at the 1% level. I think I should, should have said 1.96 is at the 5% level. So I will clarify that this in the comments. But this tells me whether my difference is statistically significant. And in general, when the data sets become large, 3,000 isn't large, when they become large, even small differences to the naked eye will be statistically significant, which is why I much prefer my mean absolute deviation. It isn't affected by the size of the data set. The summation test. I don't calculate a mean absolute deviation, and I don't calculate a Z statistic. I simply do my calculations over here. Once again, it's telling me something big with 98, 50, and uh, 15. We can actually see, we can find out what that is in a moment. Last two digits. My calculations over here. And in fact, we can go see what those last, what those big numbers are. We can go here. I'll go to data, and I'm going to sort it. Data sort, largest to smallest, and here we go. That was the big one. Los Angeles County at 9.8 million. Cook. That was actually 5.1. That's um, Chicago. Harris. Houston, and I think it was 1.6. Well, what does it tell me that they, oh, there were three numbers beginning with 1.7. I think I must have miscounted, and that's why I got that spike in that zone there. Three numbers beginning with 1.7, all that are rather big. So I'm going to delete this now. Let's go here. I'm going to do clear contents, and I'm going to do a new data set. Let's go to the other one. And I will give you the links to these data sets so that you can uh, try this uh, in your own time. This is invoices data over here. These are amounts paid by a corporation to outside vendors. I have the invoice number. I have the vendor number. I have the date for goods or services supplied. We can go back in here. And actually, because this data set is bigger, I can just go here and do a paste, and it'll overwrite all those census numbers. However, I need to copy the formulas to the bottom. And they were round about here. Was it 3,000? There we go. It's got to go all the way to the bottom now. And if I do home and home, I now check. Yes, I'm going all the way to the bottom. And so I'm going to go to my data profile. And what this is telling me is I have 100. We'll zoom it a bit here. 
189,000 invoices, $490 million. I have some credits, so these are credits and adjustments. They're not too many of them, they're not too few. This looks quite good. I have some zeros, it's always puzzling as to why I would have zero invoices, um, but 123 isn't that bad. This is quite high, 7,000 of them, less than 10. And if I go here from, from above zero, but less than or equal to 50, 22.83%, 43,000 invoices, $50 and under, this is quite inefficient. It takes quite a lot of work and quite a lot of effort and costs to process an invoice through accounts payable. I have more than one-fifth of my invoices are small amounts, totaling $1 million. Uh, I need to try and be more efficient over there. I have 370 large invoices. These should be getting my attention as opposed to these. Let's go look at the first digits. And in general, people might feel, well, this isn't too bad. However, for 189,000 uh, records, this is a horrible fit to Benford's Law. Um, these three spikes are very big, uh, considering the size of the data set and considering that um, accounts payable numbers generally do follow Benford's Law. It's a lot of extra zeros. And now I have a large data set. The first two digits are going to give me a much better picture of what's happening in this data set. I can see that I have an excessive number of numbers beginning with 10, 11, 50, 98, and 99. These two spikes are quite big in and of their own right, but I'm more interested in these ones that are close to the limit. These are numbers coming in just below 100 or just below 1,000 or just below 10,000. I will focus my attention on 10, 11, 50, 98, and 99. The summation is telling me that I either have one number or a group of numbers beginning with 15, and they're big. Around about 25, one number or a group of numbers beginning with 25 that add up to a whole lot of dollars, and at the 50 there as well. This should not be surprising. This is accounts payable, lots of numbers ending in double O. No sense. I'll take it. Um, I'm going to go back to my first two-digit graph. Benford's law is telling me I have too many numbers beginning with 10, 11, 50, 98, and 99. I'm going to go find out what those numbers are. This is going to be my, my next step. I'm going to go into the data, and I'm going to run a number duplication test. And I'm going to ask it to count the number of numbers beginning with 10, or well, I'm going to ask it to, to just do a, a count of all the dollar amounts, and I'll see what comes up near the top. So I'm going to go insert. We'll zoom a bit over here. Those are the instructions. Nobody ever reads them. And here we go. Insert, pivot table. It's got the right data range. OK, and now I'm going to take the amount down. I'm dragging it, so I'm, I've, I've gripped it with my left click, pulling it down, amount. Gripped it with the right, pulling it down over there. But I don't want the sum of amount. I want it to count. So value field settings, count, OK. And it's given me the smallest amount first. Actually, I want the largest count first. So I'm going to right click here, sort. Sort largest to smallest. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll zoom a bit over here. And what it's telling me is that there's an amount of $50 that occurred 6,022 times. I'm not so concerned as to whether this is a fraud or not. This is extremely inefficient. Something is costing $50, and this company is being invoiced 6,000 times for it, and it's processing each of these uh, invoices individually. So I've drilled down. That 50 is the cause of the 5-0 spike over there. And by the way, if we want to know which are the biggest spikes, the way we'll do that is we go to the tables, 
and we'll go to the Z statistics. And the ones with the largest Z are the largest deviations. So remember, I visually, I said it was 10, 11. Those are pretty high. 50, very high. 98 and 99. These Zs are pretty good, but I'm going to ignore them because they're not close to a boundary. And these are of slightly more interest to me. So the 99 is of more interest to me, even though the Z is slightly smaller than those Zs over there. We're going to go back to my pivot table. Now, something costing 1,153 and 35 was purchased 2,200 times. I'm not sure whether it's a fraud, but this is uh, room for error. Uh, it is a repeated purchase. It's a purchase for a high dollar amount, and it is being purchased over and over again each time with a different invoice. Lots of room for error and some room for fraud. This basically accounts for that 11. Remember we had a spike at 11? Well, this is the dollar amount, and these are the transactions that caused it. These are the transactions that caused the spike at 10. Over here, these are the transactions. 1,000 transactions for 988. And what do we know about Benford's Law? We know that numbers beginning with 98 are my second least likely first two digit combination. My second least likely first two digit combination. And a number here beginning with 98 is in position number five on the list. It has no business being there. We should say, hmm, this is a problem. Here is the 99. This is the cause for the 99 spike. Uh, something costing 994. Again, just under 1,000, 700 times invoiced individually each time. We have some other odd behaviors here. If you look carefully, this that's a real data set, and I haven't uh, fudged anything, but this is quite exciting because, watch, most of these numbers are either multiples of five or round dollar amounts. So we'll forget about the round dollarness at the moment, but multiples of five and clustered around 45. In fact, I'd like you to, and I'll give you the link uh, in the comment section, I will put in a link and I will ask you to go find the first dollar amount that is not a multiple of five cents. And uh, I have news for you, you're going to have to scroll a little bit deep. So this would be my follow-up work. What is this all about? Probably inefficiency. What are these purchases? Why are they being repeated so often? Uh, can't we maybe buy them in, in bulk and then store them in inventory and issue them when needed? And uh, this would be my further investigation. I would also look at some of these round numbers, but the small round numbers aren't of that much interest to me. Uh, let's see if we can go and find um, some of them that are a little bigger, say around 1,000 or around 2,000 or around 5,000. Uh, the way we would analyze this is I would probably need to go and pull the data into Microsoft Access or one of those other packages, and then I would look for and try and use a select query to find out what those dollar amounts are all about. If we want to do something crude, uh, we can still use Excel. I don't really like to use it in this way because it's, uh, it's not such a neat selection procedure. Uh, remember what those dollar amounts were? One of them was 998. Here it is, 988.35. And what I can do is, you could, I suppose, apply some uh, filter. We can go sort and filter up here, filter. And I can do a number filter equals 988.35. I'm not so fond of using Excel for this. I'd much rather use uh, Microsoft Access. And 
it didn't recognize that dollar amount. So we're going to go back here. Number of filters. Um, I will let you take this one step further. You can see we have a lot of scrolling here. Not all items showing. Cancel. A filter is possible. We're going to go here. Um, number filters. Cancel. <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't lose this right. Clear filter from the mount. There we go. So you can either find it with a sort and then highlight all those transactions. Or we can use a filter. Uh, for some other reason, the number filter misbehaved. And this could be my drill down and my, and my uh, further look. So, Benford's Law told me you have too many numbers beginning with 10, 11, 50, 98, and 99. Step number two, go down, see what they are, and see whether we're talking about inefficiencies or efficiencies or errors and the like. The first digit, I call this a rather blunt test. If I looked at all the numbers beginning with 1, 5, and 9, I would get a huge sample. Much more efficient. 10, 11, not all of the numbers beginning with 1, but just 10, 11. Not all of the numbers beginning with 5, just 5, 0. Not all the numbers beginning with 9, just 9, 8, and 9, 9. I hope that helps. And uh, please put some comments in the comment section below. And I look forward to hearing from you. Happy Benford's Law using, if that's a sentence. Bye-bye.